device into our network, either through the wireless or through the wired, and it will be configured and they can use it and they can SSH into it. That means that um, you need to have some way of naming those devices. So when you plug in a Vanity's research gadget, that one there, it will ask for an address via DHCP and supply a host ID, which will then, up here, be stuck by the DHCP server into the DNS system and then you can actually refer to it by name, which is nice. So, this all looks good. We're connected through some corporate firewalls that we don't have much control over. Um, whether we get changes there depends on how overworked the IT support people are, uh, which is normally very. Um, yeah, so that's what it looked like beforehand. So what we decided to do was to deploy IPv6. We would assign IPv6 addresses to all external facing things, including the machines that aren't shown there that uh, in some kind of DMZ that provide uh, web services and database services to the rest of the world. Update the firewall rules, update the DNS, and go live. And then, at the same time, because Matt over there wanted to set up the uh, IPv6 gateway, we decided to put another machine for IPv6 gateway and firewall in parallel with the others. So we ended up with something that looked like this. As a side effect, we ended up with another DMZ there that we could uh, control ourselves. Now, this all looks very nice. All these things here can get uh, IPv6 addresses. Who can see the problem? No. Oh, come on. Oh, that's okay. Um, this one here, uh, router advertisements don't pass a, a, a router. Don't, they don't go through. So we need to run bad VD there as well. Okay. Duh. So traps for the air, unwary number one. Um, router advertisements don't cross routers. Uh, deliberately so. Okay. Remember I said that uh, we run Mercurial on this thing? So as soon as we have um, the name hg.ertos.nichtotocom.au, that points to this external gateway, which is really nice. But when some random desktop says hg push, um, his route goes like this. It goes, hey, I can see this. And, and the firewall here gets really confused because it doesn't see any axe coming back and drops the connection. Boop. And we have some unhappy users. Now, you could play around with policy routing on here. <laughs> but that gets really complicated really fast. So, so what we decided to do was stick static routes in here and here so that uh, when this one goes up this way, it would actually bounce back to there. And everything's nice, right? Oh, hang on. Okay, we've got that bit. So we end up putting static routes in here. Okay, bloop, and bloop. And then, when this person wants to talk to that one, it goes up here and says, oh, what should happen is, oh, um, there's a better route there. Insert in your routing table to go there instead. And it didn't. What's going on? The problem is, that in order to make that to work, you need to give the link local address in the route there, not the um, globally accessible route, not, not the globally accessible address. Um, so we did that, and then it all started working. And that then worked. <coughs> Except that it still doesn't work for the wireless route. And I don't know why. We've got um, a static route to the whole subnet, but it doesn't seem to do um, ICMP redirects. And I'm still investigating that. I haven't had a chance to change it down yet. And the other nice, so, so where are we now? Where are we now? We can SSH out from our system, and we can see the uh, dancing um, turtle on karma.net. We can uh, do mail by IPv6 to mail servers all around the world, which is all nice if you want to talk IMFS to an external mail server. We can SSH into machines inside, um, and we now control that firewall so that uh, if somebody wants their desktop to be on the internet for SSH input, then we can open the firewall and it just happens, and we don't need to go through Nick of IT, which reduces their load, so they're happy too. 
And the DMZ meant that uh, some external people could come in and plug into our DMZ and demonstrate mobile IPv6 applications, and it all just worked. And this was all really nice. But um, we've still got some issues. That routing problem reared its ugly head again when um, Nick of IT decided to change the external interface address again that was assigned to us. And when they did that, all our routes broke because we forgot to change the static routes that um, would otherwise override them. Now, we could fix this by using some kind of split horizon DNS that inside our network um, we'd see the internal interface name and outside we'd see the external interface name. That would work. Um, unfortunately, it breaks for people using uh, VPNs to somewhere else because their default route goes to somewhere else, which would then see the external one, and we end up having a much longer path than we would otherwise have, and people get sad when things that should be fast are actually slow. So we're just keeping on adding static routes at the moment. Because there's only two of them, it's okay. I'm just hoping it doesn't get any bigger. Naming. The, the other problem is that the auto-configured nodes are anonymous. So when you type who on the home server, we see something like this. And I don't know about you, but I've no idea which machine that is. If it said Fred's machine, then it'd be much easier. So I'm still trying to solve this problem. Um, at the moment, when we're mostly running dual stack stuff, the DH client passes up a, um, a host identifier, which is then stuck in for the IP4 before address that's assigned. And I've written some hacky scripts that are extremely hacky and fragile that calculate what that address should be based on the MAC address and insert that one in as a quad A record. That doesn't work for Windows clients. Fortunately, we've only got two Windows boxes on the network. And quite frankly, I don't really care about Windows users. <laughs> so uh, they don't normally want to SSH into their machine either. So but they might want to use our desktop, but hey. So, so that one's still something I've got to work out. The DHCP and Pixie Boot are still IPv4. Um, that will depend on people like Intel getting their firmware right now. Um, U-Boot, which we use extensively, could theoretically use IPv6. Um, and we're currently looking at uh, implementing an IPv6 version of U-Boot so that it can boot stuff off the network, because we're extensively putting embedded devices on the network, booting them and having things happen. So that one's still we're working on. And there are still some problems with other DHCP services. Because we're using NFS homes on, on the um, system, it's important that people synchronize their NTP servers to that machine. So that the uh, difference between that machine, however far it is, it is from the normal mean time, is, is small. And so we're handing out the address of that via, uh, NT via DHCP. The IPv6 only nodes don't pick that up yet. Likewise, other services like name servers and so there, there is a, a RDNS daemon, but um, it hasn't been ported to all the machines we're interested in yet. So that's still ongoing work. This might get better. Um, there's a new version of DHCP daemon and client gone into to be an unstable now. It's supposed to uh, do IPv6 as well as IPv4. So we could move to a DHCP IPv6 instead of using auto configuration. And I'm looking forward to trying that out when the stuff, um, well, as soon as, I, as soon as I can get down to it. Yep. Um, DHCP for IPv6 still uses auto config. Right. Okay, the comment was that DHCP version 6, for, for IPv6, still uses the auto conf as well. Um, can I ask, can, can I somehow securely yeah. set the. The short answer is, we don't have... Yeah, tell me. I'm interested to know this. DHCP v6 requires router advertisements with prefix... It basically requires you to do all the auto-config, although you can turn off the automatic address assignment and have DHCP do the address, or you can, in fact, have DHCP not do an address, or you can have both do an address. But you must have auto-config working, which also must mean your prefixes need to be slash 64s. That's all okay for us. What I'm really concerned about is can DHCPD then insert the DNS entry, the quad A record? 
That's the bit that's missing at the moment with all I think. Anyway, that was all I had to say. So questions, comments? Yep. Oh, there was one here. He had his arm up too, and that's the one I saw first. Come on. Do you have V6 only clients? Yes, we do. Wow. How do they do? They work. They work fine. <laughs> Which of the two websites do they access? Sorry? Uh, Which of the two what websites? V6. Uh, I don't care. They, 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 they access our internal um, NFS routes. And that's all I really care about. So you're going with uh, IP version 6 DHCP. Well, uh, no. I haven't said we're going for it. I said I'm going to evaluate it. Okay, right. So you're, at the moment you're using autoconfig? Yes. And according to the gentleman down here, you would need to use autoconfig and DHCP v6 together to get the result we want. Yep, okay. Um, do you see any problems with, with, you know, in, sort of in terms of um, network discovery for... Um, like your DMZ, is, do, you, do you see any security aspects there? A DMZ, by its very nature, is open to the world and you've just got to keep monitoring it. <laughs> um, as far as the uh, autoconfig goes, I don't see any real issue in knowing that uh, that phone has that MAC address. I mean, we need it internally anyway to hmm. be able to track which devices belong to who. Uh, and that information is firewalled off, so it never gets out to the internet anyway, so who cares? Yeah, okay. Thanks. Okay, one last question. Yep, yeah, one there. So, uh, you're saying that the current DHCP server does not support IP version 6? I yes. thought uh, version, uh, the ISC DHCP server 4.1 doesn't have to do the job? It does, but it's not in Debian stable yet, and Debian stable is what we're running oh, in our right. service. Okay, so, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.